hello guys welcome back do hit the subscribe button if you are here for the first time now we are going to solve this problem which says that the serving tray t used on an airplane is supported on each side by an arm the tray is pin connected to the arm at a and b there is a smooth pin the pin can move within the slot in the arms to permit folding the tray against the front passenger seat when not in use Determine the resultant internal loadings acting on the cross section of the arm to receive in the tray can support the load shown. So this is the tray which support uh, which is used to support the food for the passenger, and it is connected with this arm through this uh, pin A and B. So we are required to find the internal loadings at the cross section through this point C, and this is making 60 degree angle with the horizontal so it's straightforward um, we have to consider this whole uh, mechanism but we have to apply the equilibrium conditions but before going to apply the equilibrium conditions we must resolve these two forces in the direction of vc and nc so let's say that this is my or uh, let's say this is our positive x this is our positive x and perpendicular to this arm is let's say our positive y so as you guys can see that this uh, x axis is making 60 degree with the horizontal so if i draw a line parallel to this line somewhere here then this angle will be 60 degree and if this is 60 degree this is 60 degree so then this is 30 degrees because this is 90 degrees so this means that if i draw a line parallel to this BC arm, let's say if this is a line, if I draw it here, this, this line is parallel to this, right? So if this is parallel to this, this angle is 60 degrees, this angle is 60. So if this angle is 60, then this angle is 60 as well. And this is 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees. So if this is 90 and this is 60, then this is 30 degrees. So we can say that this angle is 30 degrees. So this is 30 degrees. And similarly, the same case with the other force as well. So if I uh, put this line here again, so we will have that same 30 degree angle, this 60 degree. So this is 30 degrees. So now we can resolve this uh, 9 Newton force and this 12 Newton force along the x axis and along the y axis so this will be this will be our positive y this will be our positive x this will be our positive y and this will be our positive x so now we can resolve this uh, 9 newton force so we will have one of its components acting in the negative x so this one will be the cost component we can say this is 9 cos of 30 and we will have one component perpendicular to this uh, x axis this blue line is our um, line parallel to the x-axis. So this one is, we can say that this is 9 sine of 30 degrees. And similarly, we will have uh, 12 cos of 30 degrees. And similarly, we will have this one will be 12 sine of 30 degrees. Now once we resolve these forces, we can apply the sum of the forces in the x. So the sum of the forces in the x must be equals to 0 and this is our positive x direction. This is our positive x direction. Now we have nc in the negative x. We will write minus nc. We have this cost component in the negative x. So we will write minus 9 cos of 30 and we have this 12 cos of 30 in the negative x so minus 12 cos of 30 this is equal to 0 and from this we can say if i bring this to the other side of equation then nc is equal to minus 9 cos of 30 degrees minus 12 cos of 30 degrees so minus 9 cos of 30 minus 12 cos of 30 so this is equal to minus 18.19. So and C is equal to minus 18.19 Newton. 
because the forces are given in Newton. So this means that the assumed direction of NC, the given direction of NC is not right, NC is basically acting in the upward direction. So NC magnitude is, we can say that NC magnitude is 18.19 Newton and it is acting upward which is making 60 degrees. <coughs> Similarly, if we apply the sum of the forces in the y, that must be equals to 0 and this direction is our positive y direction. So as we can see that Vc is acting in the positive y, so we will write plus Vc. This sign component is acting in the negative y, this one. So we will say minus 9 sine of 30 and we have this component which is 12 sine of 30. So minus 12 sine of 30. This is equal to 0 and from this we can say that Vc is equal to 9 sine of 30 plus 12 sine of 30. 9 sine of 30 plus 12 sine of 30. This gives us 15.5. So, Vc is equal to plus 15.5 Newton. So, this means that we see the internal shear force through the cross section at C is 15.5 Newton and it is acting in this direction. Now, to find the internal bending moment at C, we must apply the sum of the moment about point C that must be equal to 0. Counterclockwise moment is assumed to be positive. Now we have this MC in the clockwise direction, so I will write minus MC. And now instead of the components, we are going to consider this 9 Newton force and this 12 Newton force. So this 9 Newton force is producing the clockwise moment about point C, so I will write minus 9. And the moment arm of this 9 Newton force from that point C is this distance, this distance from here to here. So this distance will be equal to, we can say that this distance will be, this is 115 plus this distance, plus this distance which will be this 500 cos of 60. So let me draw that here. So let's say that this point is let's say point P. So we can say that the moment arm of the 9 Newton force will be we can say this will be let's say that the point of application of this 9 Newton force is at uh, Q and this is at R. So we can say that PQ and similarly um, this 12 Newton force is producing the clockwise moment, so we will write minus 12 and the moment arm of this 12 Newton force from that point C is this distance, we can say PR, so PR and this is equal to 0. Now PQ will be equal to this distance which is 115 uh, plus this, so this will be 500 cos of this 500 cos of 60 degrees, so we can say that minus 9 PQ is 115, let me write it here, PQ is equal to 115 plus 500 cos of 60. So this is 115 plus 500 cos of 60, this gives us 365 mm and if we divide it by 1000, this is 0 0.365 meters. So we will multiply it with 0 0.365 meters. Similarly this PR length, so this is that point R and this is point P, so this is the PR length, so we can say that this is 150 plus 100 plus 15 and plus this. So we can say that <coughs> 150 plus 100 plus 15 plus 500 cos of 60. So let me write it like this 500 cos of 60. So this is equal to we can say 150 plus 100 plus 15 plus 500 cos of 60. This is 515 mm 
and divided by 1000 will give us 0 0.515, 0 0.515 meters. So this is, we can say minus 12 into 0 0.515 meters, this is equal to 0. So if I bring this MC to the other side of equation, we will have 9 into 0 0.365 minus 12 into 0 0.515. 0 0.365 minus 12 into 0 0.515. So this gives us MC equal to minus 9.47 Newton meter. Again, the negative sign tells us that the assumed direction is not accurate. MC is basically in the counterclockwise direction. So MC magnitude is 9.47 Newton meter and it is in the counterclockwise direction. So this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope this will help you in your learning. Do subscribe Engineers Academy for the solution of such more problems from Mechanics of Materials by R.C. Hibbler.